we, I was telling a girl, when we used to go down to Granny for our holidays, yes. we, Daddy used to leave us down at May's, it was the post office, and we'd get into the back of the post van, bikes and all, and he'd leave us down at the Nags Head, and Auntie Cora would meet us there and bring us down to the Granny. We'd spend our six weeks holidays there. Ah, lovely. Yeah. And then when, we, when we'd be coming home, Cora would leave us at the Nags Head and the postman would collect us in the big van and leave us yeah, at the maze. They wouldn't be able to do that now, should they? Would they? <coughs> no, of course, there's no fear then either. Excuse no. me. There's no fear of anything hap happening and ever. And there was a priest, he was a, a Vincentian there in Fibsborough, and he was from Kilkenny, and Daddy used to bring him to all the matches. And every time Kilkenny won, he threw away his hat. Daddy had to buy him a new hat. Are you serious? Yeah. <coughs> he brought us to all those Horla matches and GAA matches and point to points and God, all yeah. like that. It was lovely to have lo lovely parents and good memories, all right. Right. Billy, good morning. How are good you? Morning. You're welcome. How are you? Take a seat for a moment and Thank catch you. your breath after that stairs. Oh, I'm yeah. all right. Thank you, Michael. You're all right. Are you okay, Michael? Go, Billy, yeah. yeah. Okay, listen, I'll see you later, yeah? Hey, God bless. Okay, God I'll bless. mind yourself. And you too. Thanks, good Michael. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. You, you two as a band are not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Billy. <laughs> Take a seat, Billy. I was a bricklayer at the time and uh, money was scarce. But I came back into town Christmas Eve to buy my wife a bit of jewellery. Yes. And I was looking in a shop in Cable Street when I heard somebody saying, is it Sean or Liam? Because it was all Irish in school. And I looked around and here was an, my old schoolmaster. And I said to him, he was a Kerry man. And I said to him, uh, it's Liam, and uh, the Irish name. And uh, we got talking and he said to me, it's sitting the night that's in it, would you like a drink? I never meet the pupils, and I said, yes, we'll go over. And we went into a pub, Gable Street, and I got him a whiskey and a bottle of stout, and handing it to him, I said to him, that's for all the beatings you gave me. Great businessman at the time, he had gone to school with me. I was telling him afterwards, of course, to see Billy, I'd have thrown it over him, the yes. whiskey. But I said to him, uh, uh, you were a nil-bred man, says I, and I'm delighted to say that to you. And he said, uh, oh no, it's for your own good, says I, how could it, says I, I remember I in the choir, and says I, you kept moving me around and then you belted me across the ear, says I, yeah. what kind of a man will do that, says I, you were lucky, says I, if you ever uh, 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 did that to any of my grandchildren, says I, I'd peg you through the bloody Of course. Window. Oh, they were ill, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's sad, and everybody has the same story, don't they, Billy, but, really, uh, that they, time? But they, they were... Uh, I, I, they were the times, I, I'm 85 now, and I went to Crum I was born and bred in Crumlin School. Yes. And if a girl had to get married, which was an awful expression, had to get married, once there was a child, they were insistent, uh, the, the society insisted that they get married, and they weren't capable or uh, compatible to each other, the people. But you would be brought in, the couple, and, and their parents, you could imagine the way the suffering that the father especially yeah. would feel. And their daughter would be brought in before 11 o'clock mass of a Sunday. And they were brought behind the altar. As if God oh, wasn't I in know. the church. Yes, You yeah. know, that he was only a It's very harsh, the wasn't it, really? Yeah, and they were educated people to think like that. And they thought that by putting you down. I promise them, I, I faithfully do it, don't I, Phil? I do, yeah. <laughs> Now, it's a nice little prayer because I love the one Lovely, that yeah. says, mind yourself on the stairs and all, yeah. so that's great. I'll, I'll work on the left one first, left foot first, Brian, and then I'll yeah. work across to the right one. Yeah. So I'll just... Uh, the right the they're perfect, yeah. Brian, perfect. I didn't realise they were going to do just, yeah. just tie them up, you know, they're actually yeah. quite... Your feet are quite good. Because I, I no? usually wash them before I... Eat. They're grand. Perfect, right. I'll just swab it down on Brian first. Yeah. So how are you? How'd you get over Christmas? Was it tough on you? Uh, I was very sad without my father, yeah. yeah. Very, very sad without him, yeah. When did he pass away, Brian? He passed away on the 4th of August, two, or 5 past 2 in the morning of the 4th of August of 2012. Oh. And he was very, very good. He taught me everything, brought me everywhere, all over Dublin. 
as you know. Yes. Everywhere. Took early retirement in 1983 when he was only 53 years of age to look after me and bring me all over Dublin. He walked the streets of Dublin everywhere, got me independent and let me go off on my own then. Yes, Brian, and sorry for a minute. Excuse me. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, he I'm very, just here. very good. He, he, he was with me actually all the time, from the time I was a baby, since I was born. He's been with me all the way. And he looked after me and he discovered, he was, this was him that discovered that I was blind actually. The hospital didn't even know. The That's rotunda. strange, Brian. Yeah, the rotunda didn't even know that I was born blind. Until my father knew, my eyes were rolling around in my head and rolling and rolling and rolling around in my head all the time. Yeah. And he said it to my mother, my mother couldn't believe it, so he convinced her then he had to tell her to come over and have a look at me. I was only a couple of weeks, only a week old after bringing me home Imagine. from the hospital. And um, he said, listen then, he says, hey, there's something wrong with that little child's eyes. He's rolling and rolling and rolling around his head all the time. And so he must be, something must be wrong with him. So he started getting matches, torches, lighting matches and waving them in front of my eyes. And um, he knew then my eyes were rolling around in my head all the time. Yeah, Brian. And um, he says, see, there's something wrong with you. I think he has a sight problem today. So he brought me back to the hospital then, They'd done all the tests then. It was discovered then that I was blind. I had a sight problem. Yes. It was proven right. My father was proven right. Wasn't he right? Yeah. And... Uh, he uh, they brought me down to Temple Street there when I had an operation on my right eye when I was a few months old. There's the doctor there, Dr. Fitzpatrick, a lady doctor made a bags of it. Yes. And she wants to touch the left eye then. And my father said, no way, says he. You have to tell him, he said, the operation wasn't, wasn't a success, see, it went wrong. So, says he, you're not going to touch that left eye, see, without my permission or my wife's. See, if you touch that left eye, see, without my permission, see, I'll sue you and this hospital. Oh, Mr. Downey, see, you can't stand in the child's way. Well, see, I'm not standing anyone's way, says he. I'm not standing the way of progress. Yes. You? you people are doing your best. But, see, you have to tell me that the forced operation wasn't a success, and now you want to touch the left eye, and, says he, whatever sight he could have in the left eye, says he, I want to wait till he's old enough to be able to tell me what he can see and what he can't. And, says he, oh, she, please yourself, please yourself. No, wasn't he so, a wise man? Yeah, very, very wise. Very wise. So he waited until I was old enough to be able to tell him he used to get the stuff, the sweets and quenchers and all, and experiment with me and all that, you know. What did you get, Brian, the, the sweets? The quenchers. Remember the years and oh. years of the quenchers? They were in the long package. Right. It was all blue and green and yellow, and I could just see the little bit of the colour, you know, the shadow of them and my father. Put them all out on the table, and he was experimenting me and asking me could I see them, and then he used to tell me the colours and all that. Ah. And then he explained all them, what colours they were, and then he yes. tried to let me... Yeah, John, you're too good, Pike. <laughs> oh, at the kitchen now. This is the first year I've never been that long. I know, you missed the one you missed. They're the ones, yeah, yeah. Did his head come out of the water? I know, I couldn't help it, John. I was pulling my own line in. He would have given you, would have grinned to you. I was had to be out there before that, and I had to be taken off sick in a place called Colombo in Ceylon, which is Sri Lanka now. Yeah. And uh, I was put in the hospital, I was out there for about, what, two months. You were telling people yeah. that was a burst appendicitis. Uh, where was it? What you picked up in Sri Lanka, Colombo. <laughs> no. Oh, probably food know. poisoning, was it's it? Know. They food actually, poison, right? No, it was, I don't I mean, want to he's, no, he's trying to say. No, no listen, you. listen to me, a, black, a doctor on the ship, a funny thing, was a black rock, and he left more bodies lying around the country, it's true, uh, around the world. He wrote me mother and tell her I was dead. He did not. He did so, my I mother went mean, mad. He, that's not what he meant, he meant you were dead then. Yeah. Because of what you had. You uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you, you were Think unconscious and all. What? Well, <laughs> I was very mean? sick. Yeah. See, he'd done the air between then, and there was no, in Fremantle was the seaport. And he said no, he's, he, uh, he had no room, so I had to go to Perth. The hospital is still there now. My daughter's husband's sister works in the hospital, St. Anne's and Mount Lawley, Perth, Western Australia. Yeah, that's Never got Nuns I was with for two months, and eventually they kicked me out. They couldn't stand me anymore. You were recu recuperating? They sent me up. I had to go, to, I had to, go to Fremantle then. Um, my own parents, God rest them, were dead, and they were lovely. But I remember, like, the first time, you know, they gave Daddy a kiss as, you know, and he sort of stood back, and then he got used to it as, as we went along, because yeah, yeah. it wasn't a done thing. No, no, it wasn't a done <coughs> thing. Or for Mammy to say, love you, although she was so such a lovely person, and she'd never give out to you, she'd always praise you. 
but but she um for her to say love you was a difficult thing although we knew she loved loved you because she was so so nice and that you know and i'm so lucky to have such lovely parents but the joy of of having children is just a great joy oh i don't know I, that's why i can't understand the priests not having them Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I spoke to a priest one time years ago, he's dead now, we used to be very pally, the two of us, and he always come in, I always called him father, I never, I always respected his rank, but uh, he, he told me that many a time, that he wished he had married, when he used to come into our house, yes. and they'd be coming in, the grandchildren and that, he used yeah. to say, you have a way of living, you know, Yeah. and I said, well, you know they're there, they're part of you, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I wouldn't ever worry about dying. Because I think that you just move on. And uh, I, I, I've had a few experiences, and uh, one of them <coughs> was very, uh, uh, very, very much so. My uh, father and I were very close, and uh, he died. Uh, he got a fall off a scaffold, 56 oh, years of age. Old. And I was with him, and I used to go in. He was over in, in uh, Vincent's hospital, and they would allow me in every second night to shave him because he always said it was the man that shaved uh, uh, in here shaved the dead people oh, and he didn't yeah. want that yes. using the same razor yeah. so i used to go in and shave him and we became great pals we worked together and uh, my brother said to me a while ago from australia i envy you you, you were with him all the time but we we worked together and uh, he got this fall and I, I was married of course and uh, I used to go up every Sunday morning but he got a stroke out of the fall ah. and he was whipped back into hospital. So he was coming home and I'd no car or anything, I had to hire a car to get him home. And uh, that Saturday night a policeman, again we had no phones even in those days, this was 1956, the, 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 the policeman came down and said Billy we're at the getting word your father is not well. So I left Maeve and that one Saturday night, hopped on the bus and went across town and went in to see him. And he's sitting talking to me and he says to me, uh, will you be in tomorrow? I said, uh, yes. And he says, I, uh, he says, he come in before dinner. I hate the food here. So yes, we'll go home and have a good dinner. And I said, yeah. He says, I, my ma will be waiting for you. And next then he said to me, don't forget to put it in the paper if anything ever happens to me. To, that I was a member of the ancient guild of incorporated brick and stone layers oh, union. Yeah. I says, I, Dad, when is that going to appear in the paper? I says, see, it'll be soon. I oh. says, I, it won't. So yeah. I was only home and uh, about one o'clock in the morning, I had a knock at the door and went down as the same policeman. I says, see, your dad is down, oh. gone. So I went down and got the brother and uh, the two of us cycled in at six in the morning and we went in, he was in the dead house and he was just thrown there like a sack. Oh, sad. And I think, but we straightened them out and put pillows under them oh, and everything lovely. else and we were talking to him while we were